We have dreams and aspirations. Hi, I'm Lauren. Hi, I'm Ellie and I'm 15 and I'm from York. Hi, my name's Jade. I'm 20 years old from York. My name's Shelley. I'm 18 years old. I've lived in York all my life. I've got my own place and I work full time. How would you describe yourself? <laughs> I don't even know. How would you describe me? I'd describe you as quite bubbly. I'm a bubbly girl. I'd describe myself as a bit eccentric. Is that the right word? What's that mean? I see myself as a kind, caring and bubbly person. I'd say I have my head screwed on because I know what I want in life. I would describe myself as a coffee addict. <laughs> That's true that I am a coffee addict. So I'd describe myself as quite strong. I've um, been through quite a lot and to say that I have, I've come out of it quite well. My approach to life is taking life day by day because you never know what's going to happen. I would describe myself as a outgoing, selfless, average girl, just, you know, chilling. <laughs> My approach to life is just to get on with things and adapt to whatever life throws at me. I'm resilient. I'm influential. I like to help other people. My motto in life is you're here for a good time, not a long time, so don't waste it. Quite passionate about education and helping. Like, I love helping people. Oh wait, oh wait, okay, okay. My motto is, oh wait, no. My skills and talents are that I'm a confident, outgoing person. Oh, no. Oh, wait, wait, is it what drives me is to be the best person that I can be? My motto is, art washes away the soul, the dust of everyday life by Picasso. I am passionate about being open and getting everyone's voices heard. My skills probably are art. I love art, I've always loved art. Having my voice heard, making a difference. Well, I think I'm quite good at English. Even if it is just a couple of people, I want to know that I've had some kind of impression. I'm good at music and I'm good at communicating with people and sometimes I'm not very good at filtering my mouth. Something that I'm proud of is going to uni and now also managing my own flat at the same time. I'm proud of that. Going deep sea diving and doing my diving exam for it, so I can dive for a year. I'm a proud of I am proud of the fact I am going to college and I actually got into college. I'm proud of having so much bad being thrown my way and never letting it crumble me. I am going to college to do a triple B tech in health and social care. I've never fallen down fully. Yes, life beats you down a bit, but I've always managed to pick myself up and turn it on its head and make it a positive. When I'm older, I wish to work for the council and become a social worker. I want to go to college once I've left school to do health and social care so I can work with adults and children with special needs. The biggest lesson I've learned in life is that no matter what comes your way, the world st still keeps going round, so you've just got to kind of move on with things and try get through whatever it is that's stopping you from achieving that. Being socially awkward. <laughs> I don't really have many skills. <laughs> My skills and talents are that I'm very confident in most situations. I, I feel like I'm my skills I've been able to talk to a very wide audience. My biggest achievement is finishing college that I did a course in outdoor adventure sports in. I've done a lot of conferences where I've spoken to professionals and adults working with children and young people that are in care or in that kind of remit. I've been to Parliament three times which is a great achievement for me. I think I was very professional on my journey there so that's a good achievement. I went to Romania for a week with school and I worked in an orphanage with adults and young adults with special needs who just live in the middle of nowhere pretty much. My biggest achievements are that I've got my own place and that I'm able to manage this successfully because I know it can be quite difficult. It was really moving because it makes you realise how much you take your own life for granted. My message to the world is that everyone is entitled to have a normal 
upbringing as possible. My message to the world would be just to be yourself and do what you want to do. I don't know. Um... Don't be afraid to be yourself and to be different and to step outside your comfort zone. My message to the world is that nobody's the same. I got involved in the 1% project because I worked with Kev and Liam to do the Aspire Tomorrow project and I had loads of fun with it and it was great to see how far that project came. I got involved in the 1% project because I wanted to make a difference. I was quite interested to see how far this one would come. I got involved in the 1% because inspired you for running it to start with and we've done a lot of projects together. I got involved with 1% because I like working with Kevin Liam and I like to make a difference. It's just another way of getting people in Care's voices across. It just makes people think more carefully about the words and the actions that they choose towards people. Projects like these are important so that you can address stigmas. Projects like these are important because sometimes a young person's voice isn't heard because they don't have the accessibility to do so, there isn't enough funding or they just can't simply access it. Having this project means that it's more inclusive and it sends a message out further. The 1% is a project that helps give people from everyday society an understanding of what it's like to be in care and then going on into independence before the average person actually moves out of their family's house and just how they deal with their life. I think it's important because everyone has a stigma on people in care and it's not always how people expect it, like it's not always like what Tracy Beaker is on TV, it's totally different. Although there are negative statistics within the media, we as care leavers can still go on to achieve, we're not a number and we are living proof that success is a choice and it can be achieved. I think a lot of the time people think that it's the child's fault that they're in care and a lot of the time it isn't and there's a really big stigma on children just being troubled and naughty but it's, you're only troubled and naughty if you don't let the help that's being given affect you and accept it and try to move on with life. I believe the world looks at care leavers, another number, another statistic that a care leaver is going to go down the wrong path, they're going to end up in jail. I hope the project achieves to change people's minds and the way that they stigmatise children and young people in care. We can really have some sort of knock-on effect and make people aware of what it's like to transition. I have enjoyed the fact we've done so much together and it's just another project that we all want to, we're all passionate about and we all want to get out there as soon as possible so. I think care experienced young people are viewed in society as unable to achieve as much as another young person. I think they are looked upon lesser in society. It just felt right, everything fell into place and don't get me wrong it's a struggle but I've managed and I'm, I am where I am now and I'm happy. So. For me personally I like to prove myself as a very you know, I'm, I'm a very able person and then hit them with, oh, by the way, I'm a care leaver, because usually the rea reaction slash response is, oh, I wouldn't have guessed that. And then it's a bit like, well, why? What did you expect? You need as much support as you can because it's where you're starting out. It's like where you're going through your journey to independence and you're going to need the most support then because you don't have your parents there necessarily to support you. One in five young people who are a care leaver ends up homeless or on the streets after the first two years of moving out. I think care experience young people should be viewed in society as young people that have been given another chance. Children and young people that should be guided, that should be given hope, encouraged and made to feel like they are worth it. Projects like these are important because it gets the message out to the rest of the world that we're just the average kid and the average young person just getting on with our lives, trying to do the best we can. My hopes for the future are to be successful, to be able to pave my own path. I'd like to achieve like 
passing through college without it being too stressful going to university so I can get a degree. My hopes for the future is to have a Mini Cooper, own, a, own my own house and be happy, to go to university, learn sign language and do a social work degree. I'd like to do health and social care so it can lead me into a career which I'd enjoy. Care experience young people should just be viewed for themselves and you should get to know them for them instead of you know, judging a book by its cover. It annoys me with statistics because no one, like, not everyone is the same, so they're putting everyone in the same sock, really. So we're not all the same. One of the biggest challenges moving into independence was the loneliness. Sometimes you can't anticipate what it's like being by yourself, I guess, because you're so used to having family and friends around all the time. The biggest struggle with living on your own is probably Money management. Literally out just looking after yourself, feeding yourself, clothing yourself, washing everything, getting yourself up on time. If you're stuck inside all the time because you don't have a lot of money, then sometimes that can make you feel down and it's about like finding the best way to tackle that. It's that daunting feeling like, oh my God, this is me now. This project was made possible by Joseph Rountree Foundation and York Media LA. We have dreams and aspirations. aspirations.